Sudan, worldwide, Philly, the Philippines. Fighters tapping out for kids, teams losing is a nightmare, winning is a damn. Welcome to MMA Dogs. My name is Hector, and this is my dog, Dan. Hi, guys. And as always, we'd like to thank you to our MMA Dog Show. Now, my dog and I are thrilled with the way that UFC Fight Night 26 went. Awesome card. Betting strategy went great. So now, we're going to go ahead and look forward to UFC Fight Night 27. We have the killer against the hitman. And this is a welterweight matchup that I know we are just really excited about. We're really looking forward to breaking it down and uh, taking a look at, and seeing what we have uh, going on there. And before we dive into all that good stuff, I'm going to kick it over to my dog so he can tell us a little bit about our website. Yeah, dog. Um, if you want to check out our website, it's MMADogs.com. That's MMADawgs.com. There we have our proven track record, our betting strategy, and also our service where we charge for uh, per event. Um, on our picks, and our, those are going to be our betting picks, and my dog will talk about that in a second. Now, I want to talk about our FAQ page. We actually updated that recently. Uh, you guys have been asking a lot of questions about how to um, check out, how the checkout process goes, and uh, we kind of uh, summed up everything in there, so uh, there's that to look at, and uh, I think you guys will find it a lot more useful before, before using um, our service if you've never uh, used it before. Back to you, Doug. Yeah, so, uh, you know, I just want to keep it real with you guys and, uh, you know, uh, point out a couple things. Um, the first thing I want to point out is that there's a lot of people that like to not only predict MMA, because it's a lot of fun. It's uh, the same reason why people do fantasy leagues, fantasy footballs right around the corner. It's fun to try and predict what's going to happen in the future. And... Um, not only predict, but if you can put yourself in a situation where you are responsible and you budget yourself and you can say, hey, you know what, I want to throw down X amount of dollars this weekend on the fights. If you've never done it before or if you have, but you weren't really successful, it can be a lot of fun. But <clears throat> what I've learned is that it's a lot more fun when you're on the winning side than when you're on the losing side. And a lot of times, you know, you might get lucky and you might win this weekend, you might win that weekend, but it's all about doing it consistently. So for all you guys who are out there who are, who, who are going about it in an intelligent way, who are keeping track of it, who are doing things the right way, hey, we're, that's, that's what you should be doing. So, uh, so hats off to you. That, that's what you should be doing. Keep working hard at it. Keep going at it. And, um, and you know, just, just putting yourself in situations where you can um, afford to, to wager and you can afford to have fun with it. Now, with that all being said, I know that there's a lot of people out there who will give you advice for free, who will say, hey, do this or do that for free. But they don't really, at least I haven't found anybody who makes it convenient who makes it to where they leave nothing up to chance. They don't leave it to where it's like, okay, you, you had a good weekend last weekend or you had a good weekend two events ago, but what have you done over the last 15 events? What have you done over the last year? You know, and, um, and I feel like that's what my dog and I are great at. You can take a look at our website, like my dog said, you can see the proven track record. Um, as of today, August 20th, 2013, in the last 16 UFC events, my exclusive betting picks are 61 and 21. That's a 74.4% winning percentage. And I don't bring that up to rub it in anybody's face or to say, hey, look at me, look at me. But rather, because we have been successful at it, and if you are watching this video, you're either probably interested in predictions, you're interested in MMA betting, or perhaps you're new to it but want to know a little bit more about it. And um, so that's what we do. Uh, now, I break it down even further and make it even easier for you guys and it's five stars four stars and three stars the five star picks right now are 11 and 0 100 percent four star picks are 21 and 5 80.7 percent and then the three stars are 29 and 16 64.4 percent so 
there you have it. The numbers speak for themselves. I don't want to keep talking about it, going on and on and on about it. If you're interested, check out the website. I guarantee more winners and losers. So, you know what? It's, it's up to you. You know what you want to do. And uh, yeah, we'll leave it at that. So, Carlos Condit. He's currently sitting around minus 250. Um, according to those odds, that gives him a 71% chance of winning. Carlos Condit is currently ranked number two according to the MMA media. You can find those rankings on UFC.com. And then on the other side, we got the Hitman. The Hitman sitting at plus 200. That's about 33% chance of winning. And uh, he's ranked number six by the media on UFC.com. Now, one thing that I've learned over the years, and uh, my dog can uh, testify on this, is that once these guys, once you get to the top, five, six, seven, eight guys in the world, anything can happen. Anything can happen. So when you have odds like these, where you're giving a guy like Campman a 33% chance of winning, that can be risky. That can be very risky. And, um, you know, let's talk a little bit about Martin Campman first. So Martin Campman, what can I say about the Danish kickboxer? He is very well-rounded. He's very well-rounded. He can beat you by knocking you out. He can submit you. He can drag you out in a decision. And uh, he's just hes just a um, true fighter. He's one of those guys that I would consider a true fighter. He Right now, I know he's training uh, his jiu-jitsu with Robert Drysdale, an expert. And he's a brown belt, so he's good on the ground. Like I said, Danish kickboxer. And uh, if you take a look at his... Take a look at his um, if you, if you take a look at most recent fights, take a look, and obviously he lost to Johnny Hendricks, but, you know, who hasn't lost to Johnny Hendricks? Uh, he beat Jake Ellenberger. He submitted Thiago Alves in the third round. And uh, the thing that stands out to me is that he's won submission of the night, knockout of the night, and fight of the night. He's won all those awards, which, uh, which, aren't, which aren't easy to win. And uh, I just see a very well-rounded fighter. And uh, the one last thing I have to say about him is that when you have a fighter who perhaps is being counted out or perhaps being overlooked, that fighter knows that as they go into the preparation of the camp. They know, hey, you know what, the, the UFC fans, the UFC crowd, uh, sometimes even people in their own gym are counting me out because I'm going up against a guy like Carlos Condit. Or they're counting me out because I'm going up against a guy like this or so-and-so. And that will actually fuel that fighter to have a better performance. And that will actually make that fighter feel like, hey, you know what? I am the Rocky Balboa, and I'm going to go out there. I'm going to win this fight. So... That, amongst other things, is what makes Martin Kampman dangerous in this fight. And uh, with Carlos Condit, you know, we have a guy who is on a two-fight losing streak. You know, losing that opportunity he had at the belt to GSP. And then losing uh, to Johnny Hendricks. And, uh, you know, he's a Greg Jackson fighter. Once again, very well-rounded. He's got an equal amount of wins by knockout as he does in uh, submission, 13 and 13. And with the natural born killer, you know, it does not surprise me that he puts on these exciting fights, quality fights, and it's just going to be a fight where you got two guys going up against each other. And with Carlos Condit, I am a little bit concerned about him because what does he, going into this fight, coming off of two losses, losing to the champ, losing to the number one contender, what does he have fueling him? What does he have driving him to make him say, you know what, I'm going to go out here and I'm going to beat this guy. You know, if anything, it's, it can be the opposite way. So, uh, you know, with that being said, man, this one is going to be an interesting fight. I'm really looking forward to see how it breaks down. Five rounds. And uh, you know, I'm really curious to see what my dog, Dan, the MMA dog, Dan, has to say about this dog. So I know you're over there 
making sure all this is going smooth. So uh, what do you got for us, Dan? What do you got? Yeah, dog. This fight, I would love to do a, a nice little juicy prop bet on uh, on fight of the night or at least knockout or submission of the night if it, if it doesn't go to the distance. Ooh-wee. You know, uh, let's talk about Martin Campman first. Uh, before his last uh, his last fight with Johnny Hendricks, he had a bonus in three of his last four. But that was before his last fight, so really three of his last five fights. And, you know, Carlos Condit, he's got himself a bonus in five of his last six fights. The only fight uh, that, that he didn't get any, any bonus for was uh, his uh, fight with Nick Diaz, in which he controversially won. And if you look at Martin Campman's record... This guy has only got two losses by decision. Now, both of these losses were back-to-back, and both of these losses were controversial. More notably, the unanimous decision to Diego Sanchez. Um, You know, that was a fight uh, where it easily and should have probably gone his way. You know, but, you know, Diego Sanchez showed a lot of heart in that fight, and even though he looked way worse at the end of the fight physically like he was just beat to a bloody pulp <laughs> uh you know martin campman um still came out uh came out short with the uh, with the nod but i mean look at this guy he's got submissions knockout he can win a decision too you know he came up short those couple times and uh you know carlos condit this guy goes out there and just slays guys i don't know if you guys saw the Rory McDonald fight, Dong Yong Kim fight, those those fights were absolutely brutal, brutal to watch. And uh, you know Martin Campman, this guy, you, there's no quitting this guy. You can't <laughs> count him out. This guy, he goes in there and he fights Tiago Alves in Australia, rocks him early, looks like he's on his way to lose a decision, takes a hold of. Tiago all his neck, chokes him out with under a minute left. And then the Jake (laughs) Ellenberger fight, he showed a lot of patience in that fight too. You know, he got hurt early. um, And, you know, he came back and beat Jake Ellenberger in the second round. And, uh, you know, both these guys have a similar uh, loss. In fact, it's uh, their most recent loss, both for both of them, and most recent fight was to number one contender Johnny Hendricks. So I would definitely like to see this as a uh, as a fight of the night uh for sure and possibly a finish of the night uh knockout or submission um you know but if you want our pick on this one you want to go to the link below mm- at mmadogs.com and uh there we have our our our, uh, our betting analysis our our proven track record and uh from there you can check out the uh, rest of the card which we'll provide uh for a small fee back to you Doug. yep that pretty much sums it up, dog. And let's not forget one thing. These two guys have fought each other before. And, uh, you know, it's going to be interesting to see what... It's going to be interesting to see how this fight plays out compared to their previous fight. And with that being said, hey, you know what, guys? We are excited to move forward with this MMA dog service. We will talk to you guys real soon. Bye guys. You got money on them, say. If you know who gon' win, say. M M A Dope.